Exodus chapter 33. We see here in the portion of Scripture in chapter 33, uh, the first part of it. I want to read it to me. God showed me last night. It said here, it says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Depart. Now this is, they were, uh, Moses just had come back down off the mountain. And uh, they, the children of Israel were doing wicked things. And they destroyed the calf, the golden calf. And so they were at the base of the mountain where God was at. And I think a lot of times, like Brother Jeffrey said last night, we get to the base of the mountain where God's at and we get satisfied. We start to get satisfied preaching all of a sudden we start doing things we shouldn't be doing. Because we get complacent in the Lord. We, we know that the power of God is right there and we're, we're close by. And we see great things happen when the glory falls. Amen. So you might be on the mountain out, out in front of the mountain and you see the glory falling. But you're not really getting in. We see it and you start doing things. You're complacent with this sin and you start doing things maybe that you used to do. Because we, uh, an, idol, an idol mind, amen, is a devil's workshop. Right. You say, but I'm near the power of God. We see here that the children of God were, was near the power of God yeah. and still did wicked yeah. things. Yeah. The Bible tells us that our heart is deceitfully wicked. Right. Above all, yeah. <laughs> who can know it? And so we see here that uh, we get down to here and they destroy the calf and the Lord plagued the people because they made the calf. And the Lord said unto Moses, Depart and go up hence, thou and the people which thou hast brought up out of the land of Egypt, and the land which I swear unto Abraham, Isaac, and to Jacob, saying, Unto thy seed I will give it. The Lord was saying, You know what? Let's continue our journey to the promised land. Yeah. Yeah. Verse number two, it says, And I will send an angel before thee, and I will drive thee out of the Canaan, Canaanite, and the Amorite, and the Hittite, and the Prezerite, and the Hivite, and the Jebusite, and to the land flowing with milk and honey, for I will not go up in the midst of thee, for thou art a stiff-necked people, lest I concern thee. You know what he told me? He said, You want the, the promises that I have promised your forefathers, but without my presence. He said, you can do it on your own if you want to. Without my presence, you can go right ahead and do it. Wow. He was giving him an ultimatum here. He said, hey, you go ahead and you can get, you can get to the, the land of milk and honey, but I won't be with you. Wow. And I want to say this morning, the journey is so much sweeter when the Lord is amongst you. It's so much sweeter when Jesus is walking side by side with you. We see here in verse number four, it said, and the people heard these evil tidings. They were mad at the Lord for saying, caught them out on being wicked. And they were mad at the Lord. They, they were, they were uh, let's read it again. It says, and they heard these evil tidings and they mourned and no man did put, put on himself his ornaments. So everything they had made at the base of the mountain, Brother Jordan, they said, you know what? It's not worth going the journey without the presence of God. And as Sunday morning rolls around and as Sunday evening rolls around, you're going to get back out and go to your jobs. Let me, let me challenge your heart. Don't go without the Lord. Because he's going to let you go without him if you want to go without him. The Lord is a perfect gentleman, and he's not going to force his way upon you. If you want to go your own way, guess what he's going to let you do? He's going to go in your own way. And I bet we can go up over here and go all around the church this morning, and we can have testimonies of where we did it our own time, where we did it our own way, and how we messed up our lives. For the Lord has said unto Moses, Say unto the children of Israel, Ye are a stiff-necked people. There it is again. I don't know how, I don't know how you guys are, but I'm a hard-headed preacher. I'm a hard-headed husband. Amen. God got a, glad a good wife. Amen. Got a good wife. Puts up with us. And I'm glad that God loves us and puts up with us. He said unto the children of Israel, You are a stiff-necked people, and I will come unto the midst of thee in a moment and consume thee. Therefore now put off the ornaments from thee that you, may know, that you may know what I can do unto thee. He said, you know what? You got a chance. Put them off. Yeah. Look at verse number six. It says, and the children of Israel stripped themselves of their ornaments by the Mount Horeb. I'm glad when God gives us a chance to repent and get right. He said, you know what? Just take, don't put the ornaments on. And guess what they did? They took them off. They put them down. And I'm glad that we can come to the presence of God with the things that we carry, with the ornaments that we decorate our flesh with. And we can say, you know what? We don't need these anymore. We can strip those off and lay those at the foot of God, and he can, he, we can go on and, and have his presence in our life. Amen? We see here that God is letting them resume their journey. But I don't want, I don't, I don't want without his presence. I want, I want the promise. I want the promise that he, what he's going to do for us, and I want his presence in my life. Amen? Do you have his presence on your life this morning? There's probably a lot of people here that 
didn't come to any of the meeting for whatever purposes, what are you toting this morning? You want to get in on the meeting? Today's as good as any to get on the meeting. Amen. All you need is one encounter with God. One encounter with God. Change your life. Amen. Talking to the maniac of Gadara. This one, this one, this one instance. Amen. But I see here, uh, I see here that uh, sin has consequences. We, in that first part we just talked about. But I really want to get over here to verse number 11. It says, And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face, as a man speaketh unto his friend. Boy, I'm glad I got a friend in Jesus. Hey, man, you might, buy, you might be here this morning and don't know Jesus. You don't know him as a friend. That friend that sticketh closer than a brother. That one that told us that he'd never leave us nor forsake us. That one that told us that he would always be there, amen, on the mountain. Even through the valley of the shadow of death. He said, I'd be there. I'm going to help you walk through it, amen. I'm glad God, as a friend, will be there. He said, and he, and, he, and he turned again into the camp, but the servant Joshua and the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. If you want to see the Lord, you need to stick around the house of God. And I'm not saying you can't see the Lord in the car, and I'm not saying you can't experience the Lord on your job or whatever, but if you want to see the Lord move, stick around the tabernacle. Amen. And I'm glad, amen, that we can see the Lord move in a mighty way in his tabernacle. Look at verse number 12. It says, And Moses said unto the Lord, See that thou sayest unto me, Bring up his people. And thou hast not let me who, uh, know whom thou wilt send me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name. Yep. Yeah, right. And that thou also found grace in my sight. Yep. Boy, aren't you glad he knows your name this morning? Yeah. I'm glad April 24, even when I was a lost and undone lost man, he knew that my name was Sean Tyner. Amen. He knew exactly where I was at. He knew exactly what it would take to get me to the house of God. He knew exactly what it would take to get me, Lord, down to the altar and ask him to come into my heart. He knew exactly what it would take. And I'm glad this morning that we have a friend in Jesus. Amen. He was my friend before I was even his friend. Isn't that amazing, Brother Jordan? How he was my friend before I was even his friend. I'm glad he was a friend to sinners. Amen. You might be here this morning. Jesus is your friend. He's down here this morning just standing here wanting you to come and just come to him. Give him what you have. Give him your basket. November 16th, 2007, Brother Doug. Boy, that great message. You know, something I was sitting here the other night when we were going through the altar call. The young man here was praying for his dad. Preacher just sit there and just kind of just, just let him pray. I've been to some services where they're down there praying and it's like, okay, and everybody's kind of packing up and leaving. But Brother Doug was giving him time to yes, pray for his dad. Now, I remember that night I was giving the Lord my basket. How it seemed like four hours I was in the altar. And how they were concerned. Nobody left. When I got up, a church of Pamela was there. They were concerned about me. I was down here praying. It seemed like forever. God, it seemed like forever. I watched the video and it was like, goodness gracious, how long was I in the altar? <laughs> Amen. I was like, is it, is it broke? Is it paused? Or what's, <laughs> what's going on? I said, I don't know what happened to the DVD. I was about to run out of uh, uh, space on the DVD. But I just remember standing up and I had given my Lord my basket. And everybody was still there. I was just amazed that when you get around the, the presence of God, and when you get around the power of God, nobody wants to leave. <laughs> Why is that? Because that, that you, hopefully you want it to rub off on you. Hey, Amen. It's amazing how you get the goodness of God rubbed off on you and people see his glory in your life. And we're going to talk about this uh, this morning. When the glory, when God said, you want to see my glory? He said, my goodness is going to pass by. And we focus on God's goodness and praise him for his goodness and have his goodness upon our life, brother Christian. God's going to look at, people are going to see your life. They're going to see God. Because it's his goodness, amen, of what we're doing and why we're here. Amen. So we see here, we see, I'm glad he knows our name. In verse number 18, it says, And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. Yeah. I see that over in Exodus 16.10, he came to him. Over in Exodus 24, where Brother Jeffrey was at, he called him. Yeah. And I see here in verse number 18, I see here that he, he had a craving to see the Lord. How's your craving? How's your craving this morning? 
lot of times, uh, my, little, my, my little sister, amen, praise God, she's pregnant. Yeah, what about that? Would have answered a prayer. Yeah. That craving, amen. Amen, that craving. <laughs> Brother John, Lizzie wants to see God move in their life. Yeah. Have a craving. Yeah. And God, amen, has given them the desires of their heart. What about that? Amen. It's because we have a craving to see the Lord. What's your craving? We crave a lot of things. Yeah. Sure. Amen. Football season's come around, craving that. Yeah. Amen. Pizza, craving that. I mean, I crave a lot of food, as you can see. Amen. <laughs> How are your cravings this morning for the Lord? Did you come to the house of God this morning to see God move and crave to see him move? Or did you just come to see if you could see who was here? Did you come here just to see? You know, maybe, maybe you had the opportunity that maybe you thought you could testify and brag on the flesh. Because a lot of times we'll come into the church house not really prepared to seek and, and crave the Lord. Amen. If your house is like my house, every Sunday morning... It is, a, it is a battle with the devil, amen, trying to get the kids ready. My sweet thing right here, bless her heart. I mean, it never fails, like clockwork. I got to preach or I got to get up and do opening. It's like the devil's like, oh, no, I'm going to get in here to where you can't crave the right things. I, I, I might crave to spank her, amen. I might, I might crave to do things, amen, to, but it gets my mind off craving the Lord. If we're honest with ourselves, the devil would get put things in our mind and put things in our way to hinder our cravings. If we're trying to lose weight, you crave food, you put things in the way to help curb that craving for whatever you're getting after. The devil, he's good. He's good at it. Hey Amen. How's your craving this morning? Because if we crave him, we'll have the right desire to see him move. Moses here had a desire to be near the Lord. And it said, And I beseech thee, show me thy glory. That word desired means to strive to gain possession of something. Did you come in this morning desiring to see God move? Did you step into the, the sanctuary this morning to praise his holy name? Did you step in here with a desire to see him move? Not just to have his promises, but to have his promises with the blessings of God, but with his presence among us. What is your desire this morning? Verse number 15, he said, he said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. You know what? If we're not going to have his presence, don't even worry about trying to walk with the Lord. Don't even worry about trying to come to the house of God if you don't want his presence amongst you. It's because we get nervous amongst the power of God, and we should be. He is God Almighty. But we should want to have that desire. God, please be here. If you're not going to be here, let's just close the doors and go to the house. The power of God's not here. It's just like me just talking and just wasting my breath. Hey, man, it's a lot of time we, we desire things to make that carnal man happy, but we don't desire to make that spiritual man grow. Hey, man, we want that carnal man to succeed and grow and prosper, but that spiritual man, we just come on Sunday mornings and we want just to have just a little bit of God, just enough to make us feel like we've been to church. Just enough. I mean, y'all been in a meeting, I've been watching it on Facebook, and me and Katie are sitting there like, man, it, the power of God is just so real in the place. Mm-hmm. Watching it over Facebook, and Facebook is just about as evil as you can get it. I mean, I have one, I'm not going to lie. I don't post a whole lot, I just post pictures maybe for people to see. But man, do you feel the power of God just through just watching it on, on the internet? And I wanted to get in on that. Yeah. Hey man, how do you want to get in on it? Do you have a desire you say, I've been coming every night. But have you been coming to get in? Good. Have you been coming or just sort of the press room like, well, where you been? Right. We got people back home, preacher, you know it. If you're out, you know you're going to get a call on Monday. Hey, Amen. Right. If we missed church and we hadn't had that opportunity to call preacher Greg and tell him we were going to be there, guess what, Monday morning? Get a call. Get a call. Yes, okay? I don't go to church because I don't want him to call me. Right. 
I go to church because I want to see the power Amen. and the presence. I have a desire to see my son get under the power of God. I want to have a desire to see my little girl get saved under the power of God. I have a desire to see my man of God get up there and preach under the power and the unction of the Holy Spirit. Because if he doesn't get up there and preach under the power and the unction of the Holy Spirit, we're not going to get any help. We see Moses. Moses took time to get away, to get with God. You better thank God for your man of God. Amen. Every Sunday morning, I wait for that text to come through. Yeah. Not that I would use it in my Sunday school opening, but just so I can know, I'm like, goodness gracious, look what he gave me. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> we have that desire. Amen. Do you have a desire to see God work in your family? Sure. I mean, do you have a desire to see God move in your ministry? Right. Do you have a desire to see God move in your family? Yeah. I mean, what desire do you have that God to have a presence of God on your life? We forget about that spiritual man until the storm hits. Romans 8, 7 says, Because the carnal mind, carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject unto the law of God, neither indeed can be. We always want to be to ourselves until the storm hits. Could you imagine if Moses would have waited until the storm hit before he got with God? Over there in Exodus 16, he was getting things for the children of Israel for their journey. In 24, he was getting things for the tabernacle that they might be able to have, be, that, the, that the presence of God would be amongst them in the camp. What if, what if he waited to the last minute? I mean, Brother Jeffrey said last night he waited seven days before the Lord really called on to him. When we wait, when we procrastinate, we move before God says move. Mercy. And we'll miss what God has to say. There have been many a times I've been in church and, boy, are you just ready to, well, for whatever reason, amen, that might not happen to y'all, but it's happened to me, pray for me. You sit there on a the pew, maybe you're occupied with something else. God starts to move and you still just, you know, you still just wanting to get, get out and go do whatever you needed to do. And you miss what God has for you. You miss what God has for you. It might be, it might, it might be the uh, toward the invitation. God will speak to you. But you're so willing to get out and move on, you miss what he has to say. It was a desired place that Moses had. He wanted to be, be beside God. If we desire something based on the definition, we're going to strive for it to happen. We're going to strive for it. Amen. If I'm going to play football, I'm going to strive to be the best I can be. If you come to the house of God, are you going to strive to be the best you can be? Desiring God to move in a mighty way. Second thing I see here, I see it was a designated place. Look at verse number 21. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me. It's a place by me. And it's not a place by so brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so. He said it was a place by me. And I'm glad it says, if thou shalt stand upon a rock. It's not the fact, amen, that it was beside him. It was beside, he was, put you on a rock, yeah. on a solid place. Yeah. On something that's not going to break, on something that's not going to fail, on something that's not going to fall. God's going to put you on a solid rock. Yeah. And if we're going to be beside God, and we're going to live with God, we're going to be on that solid rock rock. Amen. And I'm glad I had the solid rock foundation in my life. Amen. This designated place we see here was selected by God to put Moses in this spot that he knew would change his life. Amen. God knows exactly Brother Jeff. You're beseeching the Lord for your ministry. He said they got a space by me. You know it's going to be in that cliff of the rock. And we'll talk about this in a minute but the cliff of the rock is not an easy place. It's a hard place. But I'm glad amen it's a dark place. Yeah. But I'm glad it was chosen by God to put me in. You might be going through a certain season in your life. You say, Lord, I've been beseeching you. I've been get, I've been, I've been have a desire to see you move in my life. And now, I'm in this place as hard as can be. I don't, there was only one way out. Put them in the cliff of the rock. There was only one way. You, you only had a one way out. So God, I, I, don't, I, I just don't, I don't want to come back the way I came. But if we realize that God put us in that cleft and realize that that is for our development and for our growth, it'll help us. 
Aren't you glad that God knows our frame? Over in Psalms 139, it says, O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my downsitting and my uprisings. uprisings. Thou understandest my thoughts afar off. Thou compassest my path and my laying down and art acquainted with all my ways. He's saying, you know what? I know who you are. I'm glad over there in the book of Luke, he told me he would pray for me, that my faith would fail not. Brother Jeffrey, this morning you might be facing a trial that you've uh, been facing for a long time. You might be wanting to take that towel and throw it in. Don't throw that towel in. God's saying, I'm praying for you Amen. that your faith would fail not. Amen. You might be wanting to give up and your faith is just hanging on by a little thread. Just know that the God in heaven that put the stars in existence said, I'm praying for you that your faith would fail not. I'm glad I have a God that prays for me. I mean, he is concerned with me. He's concerned with my down sittings and my uprisings. He's concerned when I walk through that valley of the shadow of death. But he's also concerned with me when I'm on the mountaintop. Amen. He said he compasseth my path. What does that mean? What's that mean? He's everywhere. Yeah. It doesn't matter if I go this way, he compasses me. Go this way, yeah. he compasses me. I go this way, I'm compassed about. Right. And I'm glad that God, amen, if we have the right desire and, have a, and we're in a place that God has designated for us, yeah. you're in his power. Hey. Right. Amen. So a lot of times we want to look for a way out. We want to look for a way out because it's getting too hard. You get, a lot, you get around a lot of power. Yep. Boy, it starts to work on this old flesh. You just say, you know what? I just, need to, I just need to sit down and get away from God. Just rest. But I'm glad that God compasses the bow. Sure. Amen. He knows, when you, he knows that you want to sit right here and take a rest. You know what? And sometimes he will let you sit down right. and take a rest. Right. It's a designated place for the Christian to get help. And it's all started with a beseeching and a desire to see the Lord move. In verses number 22 through 23, it's a divine place. It said, and it shall come to pass. And I'm glad when it, God said it's going to come to pass, Brother Jordan, it's going to come to pass. Amen. He said, you could take it to the bank. And no matter what it is. If he said my name was Christy, take it to the bank. Whatever he tells you, it's not going to be a lie. He's not going to lie to you. Amen. The devil will lie to you. Amen. It says, It shall come to pass while my glory passes by, that I will put thee in the cleft of the rock, and I will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. Could you imagine being in the cleft of the rock, and God's hand's just right here? What do you think Moses was doing? I imagine he was like this. Just rubbed up on it. But it's just the hand of the Savior. Amen. Maybe, maybe it had that, that scar. That scar. Boy, maybe the hands of God. Could you imagine just having the hand of God just right there? Boy, I just nestle, yeah. just nestle right. Just nestle right up to it. It's about, about as close as you can get to the power of God. Was God's got you in his hand. And I'm glad we can't fall out of his hands tonight, this morning, church. I'm glad that hand that put the stars and put the planets where they're at is the same one that took that hand and put it over the cliff of the rock. He said, I got you, Moses. And while you were in there, amen, it might have seemed hard, Brother Phil, yeah. but he was hidden from the enemy. Maybe God has you in the cleft of the rock today that he's protecting you and hiding you from the enemy. Amen. I mean, when he was in there, he just had him perfectly hidden. The devil couldn't get to him. And I'm glad when we did that time of development, I'm, I'm glad when we get in that, that place where God puts us, he hides us from the enemy, and he just lets us, amen, rest without the fight. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Who gets, anybody get weary and well-doing? Yeah. Anybody fight the devil, amen? Yeah. And I'm glad when God put us in the cleft of the rock, he can hide us from the enemy. He was fully seeing Christ for who he was. You know, before I thought it might have been dark in there, actually. But God's light, amen? Yeah. I mean, it's, his hand probably had light coming out of it. I thought, initially, I thought it might have been dark in that cleft. But I'm glad he, he, just, he let me see clearly where there was dark, amen? I'm glad when we had confusion in our life, 
When God puts his hand upon us, he'll be a light unto our feet and a lamp into our path. Amen. He can pass us about. Amen. He's around us. He is light. He's going to show us our direction. You can't go wrong if you're following the Lord, Brother Doug. You might be in here this morning needing direction from God. Where are you going to get it? In the cleft of the rock. In the cleft of the rock. This place was an elevated place. An elevated. He put him up on the cliff of the rock. Elevated. I'm glad when God puts us somewhere, he's going to elevate you. He's going to keep you off the dirty ground. He's going to put you in a spot that's specifically designated for your life. Amen. I'm glad it was a divine place. And then I see that it's a place for his development. Here, Christ placed Moses in the cliff of the rock for his betterment. If we just realize that when God puts us in a designated place... He's going to develop us to take us to the next, next place. Sure. Amen. Yeah. Every time Moses met with God, it was because he was getting something for the children of God to go to the place they were going next. Right. Amen. What are you needing from the Lord this morning? Or, uh, do you need development? Yeah. How's your spiritual walk with God? Yeah. Could you imagine? I, mean, I just couldn't imagine. God, God's hand is on the cleft of the rock. Maybe Moses was talking to him. God. God. Yes, Moses. This is a hard place. I know. Well, uh, you gonna let me? You gonna let me see that glory you're telling me about? That one I saw back in a few chapters ago. I'll let you see it. Just, just, just wait. I wonder how long it took him to walk by. It didn't tell us how long it took him. Maybe, maybe it was a, maybe it was a couple of days. God's a big God, amen. Sure. Yeah. He's a good God, a big God. He said, "I will take my." And I will take away mine hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. I mean, you get to see just a little bit. Just a little bit of God. Just like the woman with issue of blood. Man, didn't even, didn't even really didn't, didn't touch him. But just touched the hem of his garment. Just touched the hem of his garment. I always love that great story because it just, in my mind's eye, to see the lady with issue of blood on the ground just just trying to get to God could you imagine God was walking she saw it's him there it is and maybe, maybe, he, maybe he took a right and going somewhere else and that's oh man I missed it but you know what she didn't give up she kept pressing she kept pressing to just to touch the hem of his garment when she got that she was developed just a little bit better amen it said, it said immediately the, 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 the straight wave of blood was what dried up yeah. I mean immediately yeah. immediately yeah. I'm glad when I was when I was sinking in sin I had called him guess what immediately yeah. amen, amen. Yeah. I'm glad we just got to call on him right. why he's near right. and I challenge you he's near yeah. he's near yeah. are you calling on the Lord for your development yeah. Moses's life was changed after God removed his hand to reveal the light Amen. Anyone here tonight need to see his goodness? You say, I've, seen, I've seen his goodness. No. You've seen his blessings. But have you seen his goodness? Where are you at this morning? We come in and say, well, we've been in a meeting for three weeks. But well, praise God for it. He, he had seen the glory of God plenty of times before. But it was a new time to see the glory fall. It was a new time to see God's glory. It's not it's just like Brother Jesus said. You was on the mountain. You saw the cloud. Every time they see the cloud, they see the cloud. It's new. It's a new time. Amen. We come in this morning. I want to see God afresh Amen. and anew. Yeah. Yesterday, last night was great, but this morning, yeah. there's different people here this morning that still need to need to see God. Because if it would suffice, if you weren't here last night, tough luck. Yeah. But I'm glad that God wants to manifests itself Amen. this morning yeah. he wants to help us this morning sure. in the darkness there are a few things that your body will do to help you survive your body will become more sensitive to light boy you, you might think in, you're in a dark place but boy just a little boy just a little just a little light your body's like oh there's, there's God I got, I got to get to, I got to get to him it's just, I just, your body is just so much sensitive to light. 
Psalms 119, 105 says, the word, the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Amen? So your hearing also becomes heightened. God don't have to get to a loud tone for you to hear. I'm glad God speaks in a still, small voice. When you're in a place of darkness, you're, you're more sensitive to light, and your hearing is picked up. Sure. Good. Amen. When I get out in the dark, we're in the woods, you won't, find, you won't find this boy out in the woods in the dark. Amen. Right. All of a sudden, you hear that crack. You're like, yeah. what's that? Good. But when it's light, you just walk about your business. Right. Go about it. You're in the light. You don't fear anything. Right. But your hearing is heightened. In, some, in the darkness, your health is repaired. Amen. I'm glad in the times of darkness, God will sit you down so you can actually repair some things. I'm glad God will let you sleep and let the body release that melatonin that helps repair your body. Amen. How's God this morning going to develop you? Is it by that divine place? That designated place? That desired place? He called us last night. Amen. But he wants us this morning to have a craving to see God move do you have a craving to see the Lord move today if you don't just pack up and go you heard brother Doug praying this morning don't let anybody come in that doesn't don't want to be here because all that's going to do is just ruin the spirit I'm going to challenge your heart this morning where are you in your walk with the Lord are you at the mount just the base of the mountain complacent just to see God just, just to see the cloud do you want to be caught into the cloud do you want to get that clay out of the way goodness gracious that message will stick with me forever getting the clay out of the way I want to be caught into the midst and I want to have a craving to see the Lord move I challenge you this morning where are you with the Lord you say I don't know the Lord you, Lord showed you this morning. Maybe, maybe, maybe you've been at the base of the mountain and you've been thinking that you know the Lord. And I'm not here trying to cause you doubt because I've, I've been there doubting my salvation and it's not a good place to be in. But when you get amongst the glory of God, you know what God can do? He can nail it down. I'll never forget the time I got it nailed down. I was in Bible college. You're like, Bible college? It took you that long? <laughs> hey, I battled the call to preach for many years. And I was like, once I surrendered my basket, the devil's still fighting. Well, you well, I was sitting in Bible college. And I, I've heard the disciple walking on the water to Jesus. I heard it a million times. But it was when I was sitting there in class, and that word immediately popped up. Boy, it's just something like, he just come across and it just, boom, hit me. He said, when you called upon my name, it wasn't what you said. Right. It's nothing you did. Right. It was my grace. Amen. It was my dying on the cross, my shed blood on Calvary right. that saved you. Amen. You might be doubting this morning. Don't leave until you get it nailed down. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always... Thanks for listening.